Hello everyone. Uh, this year I'm going to um, make a try and participate in uh, 31 Days of Tarot, a community challenge uh, set up by Ethany. I think I tried to do that last year, but I I haven't managed to finish it. Oh, my stone it has fallen. Didn't realize that. It's okay. Ah, oh, it's perfect. And yeah, I'm gonna try uh, this this year, and I want to catch up for first three days. So today I'm going to do a 2019 reading, uh, top 5 tarot decks of 2018 and top 5 oracle decks of uh, 2018. It's not that difficult. <laughs> okay, so for the reading I'm going to use a, a dreamer, uh, Dreaming Way Tarot. It's also a deck I purchased uh, this year. And I like it quite a lot, but um, it won't be included in uh, in top five, although I really like it and I use it quite a lot. Okay, so let me shuffle a little bit. I want to ask for the main energy of the year 2019. What's the main energy for me? Four of Swords and Major Lesson for 2019. Two of Pentacles. So, all minor arcana cards, and I'm very happy to see Four of Swords. It's like uh, having rest after some uh, difficult task. It's also a very meditative card for me. So uh, if it means that in my tarot work I'm going to meditate a lot, then I'm very, very happy because I know what good meditation is, what a blessing it is for, uh, at least for me, but I think generally to humanity. This is a great way to really connect not only with um, my inner being but also to the source itself. So peace of mind is the main energy here. And the lesson of Two of Pentacles, you can see what this person is doing. He or she is standing on one foot, the other is up in the air. So it requires maintaining balance all the time and paying attention to what your body tells you, what your inner ear, what signals does it, um, does it send to the rest of the body. Not only uh, the person is standing on one foot, but uh, uh, they are also juggling two pentacles. They're... Um, having them up in the air and they also uh, maintain balance between themselves you can see they are connected with this um, symbol of infinity so it's ever changing everlasting change here sometimes this one is up sometimes this one is up they represent well kind of opposites um Sometimes it's what you see with your inner eye and what you see outside. It may also be understood as work and play, keeping them in balance. Um, so this card always evokes uh, questions about the course I am on. Is it really the course I want to be on? Is is, is the purpose that I chose? Mm still in sight or uh, have something changed in during during the way and am I still 
Am I still in the place I want to be? And uh, is the thing that I pursue still the thing I want to pursue? Uh, because sometimes this card means, you know, just maintaining status quo and uh, going with the flow. That isn't going to work in the long term because you can't uh, remain on one foot for a long time. Something will change here no matter how agile and strong you are. So huh, it may be uh, a lesson of trying, trying too hard to do too many things at once uh, without really uh, paying attention to the bigger picture. I feel it goes this way for me, that perhaps I should look more around, not f not to focus on the mundane things that I tend to do, I have to say. I have this established uh, course of the day and sometimes it's really easy, uh, sometimes it's uh, really difficult for me to to do something more than that. I mean, my life is quite uh, full of, of, of things and things I have to do and, and people I'm responsible for and um, the people I work with and to maintain it all it really takes up all the time I have and sometimes I I don't have it for for the things I consider most important like being creative for example so it may it may be a very needed lesson for me I feel okay so that's the that's the first day of the challenge the second day is top five tarot decks of 2018. The ones that I purchased uh, during this year or the ones that are released in 2018. And I was quite surprised to um, when, when I summed it up and it occurred that I didn't really bought, I didn't really buy uh, this many decks this year. I thought it was about 20, but in rea reality, I, I, I don't think it's even 10. So it's not that bad. <laughs> and now in no particular order, just as they, as they are um, put on the table. The first one is long-awaited Star Mantaro that I bought with the book. And the book is, is a very good book, I think. So it's really worthy to buy it uh, as a as a kit. And what can I say? Uh, I I absolutely love and appreciate David Bowie as an artist, and that's why I was so um, eager to see uh, the deck and to work with it. And it's uh, beautifully creative, and also beautifully intuitive. You can see, I had some. Uh, I had some doubts when I uh, when I put my hands on it because it's not very well printed. You can see that the 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 backs are in many different colors, which is quite strange for this kind of publication. It shouldn't look like this, but what's inside <laughs> really uh, really makes it not important. Because the pictures are just brimming with energy and they are so complicated and so, so full of symbolism and they really make me dive in deep and follow unprecedented and unknown paths that just... Uh, happen to appear when I read. <laughs> so it's like ever unfolding um, path in a futuristic, cosmic, psychedelic garden. You can see the pictures are just stunning here. And I love to watch them and I love to meditate on them. And um, I, I really like uh, what is written in the book, but um, it still leaves lots of space for you 
to dive deep and to draw your own interpretations of the card. And they also reveal some things that I wouldn't even thought of uh, before. Tarot is such a complex system and still there's plenty of space for new things every day. Every day. Look at this Queen of Pentacles. How gorgeous it is with the DNA helix and those roots, <laughs> organic roots. Uh, her gown is made of it. So oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I won't show you the whole deck, of course, uh, but I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. So that's the first one. Then the second one, uh, I think it's my newest purchase. And I was really not sure whether I want it when I first saw it. I was quite sure that it it won't work for me. But then I saw it in several uh, YouTube um, channels as people work with it. And I thought, let's give it a try. Game of Thrones Tarot. The story I know very well because I've read all the books. And I've uh, watched uh, all the series twice. So I know the characters quite well and I know the world very well. And I love it because it's very uh, <laughs> true and uh, straight to the point. Why this deck? Well, mostly because of the uh, additional value of it. When I know the story behind it, and I see how well the characters are chosen here, it really adds depth, addition, additional, additional meaning, but also very precise examples of the energy. And I love it because uh, the precise example is something I really, really like in a deck because I tend to be very abstract in my readings and what it gives me is this uh, grounding. Okay, Alexandra, you're right. <laughs> Twice this guy. You're right in, in what you're saying, but what's, what's the example of this? How this energy can play out in life? how this character may be seen in real life. And this deck really delivers this kind of, uh, this kind of support. So, um, it, also, uh, it also lies very well in hand. It shuffles beautifully. It has this thickness to it and, and volume. It's quite heavy and I like it a lot. So that's Game of Thrones. The third deck I want to show you is another very big deck. And it definitely is not uh, from 2019. It wasn't uh, released. It's an old deck. But it's 25th anniversary uh, edition. I had no idea that uh, such a deck even exists, but when I saw it, I knew that this is the deck I uh, I will buy, even for the collector um, value. And I have to tell you, I'm not a collector of tarot decks, absolutely not. I see no point in doing this. Uh, it, it stands. It stands against my my values. I hate consumerism. Um, I hate this culture of buying more and more and more and more and more and never being satisfied with what you have. But this one, I think, it's a piece of art. It also goes with beautiful uh, purple um, cloth that I use when I travel. I pack my two uh, decks in a tin in it, uh, so it's very useful. 
the backs look like that I think they are very beautiful uh, lunar like and solar like full of light and the deck itself it's just a intricate masterpiece you can see the the sheer volume of uh, details and how it is constructed it's it's like woven and made of scraps of different materials it's very well thought through it has plenty of symbolism for example this card of the high priestess is absolutely full of symbolism you can see the owl you can see gems you can see special kind of leaves here the lion with wings uh how how her hands are posed is even this is important in interpretation. Each card has its own border, which is also very, very beautiful. So, absolutely stunning piece of art. I don't use it very often. I use it, if I use it, then it's for uh, major readings, like readings for, for the new moon especially, and sometimes for the full moon. I would also use it for uh, yearly readings. Perhaps I will when I am going to do um, readings for the Chinese year. That's my plan, at least. I think they would uh, go beautifully with it. So you can see for yourself. It's quite retro. It has this retro vibe. And um, it's also like a college uh, deck. I'm not very fond of them, to be honest. I think they are overly popular these days. But this one, this one is really special and it has this unique vibe to it. And I love it. So that's the Enchanted Tarot. I'm very grateful that I have encountered it. Because it would easily, you know, just slip under my radar. And the fourth deck, I think the most beautiful deck that I possess. <laughs> it's Ethereal Visions, Illuminated Tarot deck by Matthews. It's very Art Deco in style. It's so beautiful that I decided not to use it. I just want to have it and look at it at, um, from time to time. I think I'm going to buy another one. To work with it because it's a sheer pleasure to work with it. I'm going to show you some cards. I have Major Arcanas picked because I use them in my yearly readings. They are the most uh, decorative, uh, the Major Arcanas. Lots of this golden foliage which is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the moon. How dreamy it is. The sun shining, <laughs> emperor, the tower, wow. The temperance, I think it's, it's the most beautiful uh, card in this deck and also one of the most beautiful temperances in, Sorry. <coughs> in, in all, my, in all the decks that I have. Uh, so, and, and it works beautifully. It's not that it's, you know, ethereal and I, I can't use it for work. No, it really conveys the energy for me. So I think it's only a matter of time that I'm going to buy the, the, the working one, <laughs> the Empress. Yeah, I'm going to show you all the high priestess that is on the, uh, on the cardboard, on a box. Absolutely gorgeous uh, pictures. So that's uh, Ethereal Visions. Okay. And last but not least, the deck I think I used most often this year, especially in this channel for uh, English readings, uh, daily readings. If you know me, you know what I'm talking about. 
it's silly taro i have no idea why it's not more popular than it is perhaps because of the size I tend to like little decks like this more and more because they are really nice to work with. They shuffle beautifully and uh, they are easy to transport. So I take them with me whenever, wherever I'm going. I have no idea why people didn't fall, fall in love with it as I did. It's a toss-based deck, so perhaps that's the reason. Also, it has several mistakes in the print, but who cares? It only adds value for me. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It's full of emotions. You can see it's made mostly in watercolor technique. So the colors are partly translucent and there are many planes uh, unfolding and, and um, creating this three-dimensional uh, atmosphere here. The colors are absolutely stunning. The symbolism is accurate for me. Um, it's not a very uh, bombastic uh, deck. I mean... There are not so many symbols in it, but if you know Taro, you know very well and you see things that you should see. And you also see um, added value here, like this kind of shattered glass here for Five of Cups as a disappointment. Look at the Ace of Swords. It's, I mean, how can you not fall in love in this card and have it uh, as a full uh, size uh, painting on the wall. I would love to have it. It's so beautiful. Okay. Just a few cards more. Yeah, three of pentacles. And it comes in this uh, beautiful tin. So your cards are protected. <laughs> you don't have to worry. But they're gonna why don't you want to close okay they're safe and sound in a tin but now it wants to remain open for some reason i don't know why okay and for the third day we have top five oracle decks of 2018 once uh you purchase and or released in 2018 and I have a confession to make. I don't even have five Oracle decks. I am still into discovering uh, the necessity of Oracle decks while uh, using Tarot. I mean, I like to use them sometimes. Uh, but I really rarely do uh, tarot readings, sorry, uh, readings using only oracle decks. For me, tarot is such a profound system that I, I don't really feel the necessity to use uh, something from another system. But there's one exception. I sometimes make readings using only this deck. It's Shamanic Healing Oracle. Uh, I can't remember when it was released, but it's definitely not this year. It's older. It goes with a tiny little book that is full of profound wisdom. I absolutely adore it. It gives a helping hand whenever I ask for. I love the imag uh, imagery, imaginary, imagery which is, as you can see, it's quite easy. It's also quite dark, but it stands out even more because of it. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? So, yeah, masculine energy. It has this golden... Uh, 
edge so it also looks nice and I love to uh, to use it also as an addition to my readings so that's the first one the second one that I found quite useful and interesting and also I, I, I like the pictures quite much is uh, the uh, the angels and ancestors oracle deck it also goes with the guidebook The pictures <laughs> look at them they're stunning and it also it really resonates very very well with my readings as an additional guidance additional uh, value again it's kind of ensuring that everything's gonna be okay and that uh, we are deep complicated creatures and we can uh, what we can find within is uh, are things that we wouldn't really um, expect to be there. But it's all there. When you get in touch with your ancestors and with your angels, you can find all those people, all those energies within you. This card never appeared. <laughs> It's funny because I've been using this quite a lot. I think this one is my favorite, the White Witch. It appeared in my uh, yearly reading for me and I quite resonate with it. So that's the second one. And uh, I'm going to also show you two more decks that I possess. Two more Oracle decks that I haven't still mm, made connection with. The first one is a Rumi Oracle. I was thinking I'm going to love it, and I do, but I can't find space for it in my readings. So I, I would like to learn uh, how to work with it. I think what I need to do is to go more deeply into the, into the book itself and to work uh, with it uh, just for me because this deck is really you know it's stunning and when i was reading the uh, the descriptions in the book i was crying because i love rumi i absolutely love the poetry of it and i think he's one of the few people in human history that has really touched the one, the universe, the spirit. He definitely had a connection and and the blessing of seeing beyond duality. He was one with God. I, I have absolutely no uh, doubt about it. And you see, I quite like the graphics here. I love... Um, the names of the cards. I surge on the uprising way of love. Even the sound of it. From nothing to everything. Whirling goddess. <sighs> Divine discontent. I mean, how gorgeous it is. Beyond death, life. I Something just melts inside of me when I... When I see it and when I read it. And I know that if I'm going to read the... Description is going to touch me on a very deep level, but perhaps that's why it's difficult for me to use uh, these cards in my readings because they are, yeah, they are too deep. They are too, no, not too deep, too intimate. I think they are too intimate. I might have read with these cards for one of the closest persons in, in my life, but nobody else, I think. That's why I don't use it very often. And the fourth uh, Oracle deck that I have uh, is uh, the new one. It has just arrived two weeks ago, I think. And I haven't used it yet. Work Your Light Oracle cards. I really like the pastel uh, palette of colors here. And when I was watching it on YouTube, I thought, yeah, it's something for me. But as 
As for now, I wasn't able to connect with it. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's fine. By the way, I think it has the same, exactly the same format as Angels and Ancestors. And the same card of uh, paper used, which is quite difficult to shuffle. So everything is fine with this deck. I mean, even now when I look at it, double mission, channeling up and uplifting humanity. Yeah, I love it. Just say yes. I have this feeling it's too abstract. Even if I see this, it's not abstract at all. Just say yes, it says. You couldn't be more precise. Answer the call. But I still don't know how how do I connect it with Taro. So I think I'm just gonna practice and hopefully, hopefully, it's gonna find a way to my heart. So these are the four decks, four oracle decks that I possess. Okay, so that's for the day one, two, three. And see you in next entry. I hope I'm going to do them on a daily basis. Next entry is about top five tarot books of 2018. Okay. Uh, until now. Bye-bye. Have a beautiful day.